It's great to see all these marvelous faces and, and feel the hearts that throb for love and peace and uh, relentless persistence in the pursuit of it. Uh, what I'd like to spend some time on is this whole idea of localization. Um, it is my contention that the ideal world where it's easier for human beings to love each other and the earth, everything would be decentralized. You would not have nation states. You don't have people 500 miles away or 1,000 miles away making decisions over our life. We would guard security and freedom so much we don't want that. The evolution of civilization really is the evolution of centralization of power. We have many great things that have come from evolution since hunter-gatherer days with the advent of agriculture about 11,000 years ago. Uh, there's a movie called um, Instinct with uh, Anthony Hopkins. He's an uh, anthropologist and he studied gorillas and he seemed to disappear and he was accused of murder and so on. Well, the point is, exciting, he says dominion, that's the problem. Can we stop playing God? Can we give up that kind of power? Dominion, meaning domination. Uh, I believe that civilization ends up being created on centralization of power. And no matter how good willed people are that start that, along the way you are going to have people seduced to, to wanting to control and greed. And so how do you minimize uh, domination and control? You, you know, do away with a consumer society, do away with bigness, so that the power is at the base, the local village or town. Uh, you don't build big cities, etc. And so there's, you know, a lot of resistance to that kind of an idea of good things happen out of big cities. Well, yeah, but uh, my concern is I don't think it's worth it because you end up centralizing power and you're always fight, fighting those who grab control and power. So that means you take care of, uh, uh, you become as autonomous as you can at the local level. Gandhi, in the history of India, saw that village life was the norm and that the sages of India realized, hey, we could make new inventions, we could centralize things, we could uh, you know, make new, better inventions, but they thought the simple village life was the ideal. It was not perfect, but before the British occupation, Villages were independent. And then their uh, occupation came along where they do destroy local autonomy and then people were poor. Cash crops and all that kind of garbage. But anyway, that's my idea of the ideal. But even if you don't believe that, I believe that we have to go to localization out of necessity, out of the horror that is unfolding with shock doctrine and uh, uh, the few that want to own it all. It's the, you know, I played Monopoly as a kid, and I'm sure you did, maybe some of you still play it. What's the goal? Own it all. So, um, so it's quite a battle ahead of us. And we can't be discouraged because we have to have the vision. And that's part of what, what today is all about. We've got to keep the vision. Jesus had a vision of the kingdom of God, and he, he was so passionate, he could taste it, feel it, and lift it. Whereby it's easier for human beings to love each other. So anyway, what are some ideas of localization? Well, I haven't gone into it deeply, but uh, you know, along the way I'd like to. Some people have. What are some possibilities? Uh, Detroit is doing things that I don't know what it all is. So I need to sit down with somebody and really kind of capture good things happening in the midst of a kind of hell. Um, so one thing, for example, is create local money. Uh, Ithaca Hours. Ithaca, New York has a model for decades now where they create some of their own money and people buy into it, a common bank, whatever you want to call it, and you have thousands of people doing this and you even have a couple of hundred local businesses doing this. Not a McDonald's corporation because the money has to go out of the community into the pockets of the super rich, the CEOs, etc the largest stockholders. Local money is, it, it doesn't look exactly like a dollar bill, you can tell it apart, but uh, the Ithaca dollar, uh, hour, the Ithaca hour is worth $10. One hour's work. If you do child care for me, I can pay you with an Ithaca dollar in our, our, our 
community, and then you go to a local store that accepts Ithaca hours. And your employees in the local grocery store will accept some of their weekly pay with Ithaca hours, and the money stays in the community, and you have to move it quickly. You don't hoard it, you don't save it. The, more, the longer you keep it, it, it depreciates deliberately to keep it circulating, and it actually creates more jobs in the community. That circulation of money like that creates jobs in the depressed community. Um, and so uh, doing that in every community, I, I just think it's so exciting, uh, and I wish it happened in Lansing, but I, you know, I've got time, I can't even do what I'm doing now. Uh, uh, I think hours. Uh, and it's exciting, so like 17% of people's home but uh, personal budgeting is in Thika hours in New York. Uh, that kind of thing, that's exciting to me. Create parallel schooling. Uh, they did this in, uh, it was possible actually, uh, under the oppression of uh, um, uh, they had, who was the great nonviolent leader? And uh, uh, they created parallel schools in their communities, in homes, people had classes. They didn't have a building, they didn't buy, you know, they didn't build buildings uh, like millions of dollars spent on building a school, a local school, but rather in homes and making do with what you have. Create parallel schooling, even universities. Incorporate existing neighborhood organizations that already exist. Uh, most of them tend to say, well, we're, we're helping the police do their job of keeping peace in the neighborhood. Say, no, 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 we, we do our own policing. Uh, peace teams, nonviolent peace forces in the local community. And uh, um, maybe it's volunteer services and, you know, people take shifts. So, Everybody uh, is on a peace team, not everybody, you know, for hours in the week or whatever. Uh, incorporate existing neighborhoods uh, if uh, you can have them by the vision, by the vision. If not, you start your own local neighborhood where, uh, organization whereby you're doing this pooling resources, creatively thinking, how do we deal with the problems? Key problems are food, clothing, and shelter. How do you localize it all? How do you localize it all? You know? Uh, food, yeah, community gardens. And there can be um, some who make it their own little business and they're not out to get rich. And they grow food for people in the neighborhood who can't grow their own food. But a lot of people grow their own. Just like a, a, a local owned baker owned by all the workers. You might have uh, six workers in, in the local bakery and they all own it and they're not out to get rich but have a decent lifestyle. Uh, the same with teachers in the, uh, the local schooling. Uh, the teachers could own it. Or, uh, uh, start the small stores and shops to serve the neighborhood of uh, things they own. Owned cooperatives. Michael Moore has the example in the movie Capitalism of a bakery where they all own it and the average, everybody makes the same. The CEO and uh, all the workers, they, they make the same and it's something like $65,000 a year. A big uh, 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 The steel mills, remember in uh, Cleveland, the workers went to buy the steel mill, etc. Well, again, a steel mill is a huge thing. We're talking about in the neighborhood, how do you meet basic needs? How do you create a local community based on this, uh, uh, this kind of localization? Uh, where, you know, as I say, anything can be cooperatively owned or family owned. And uh, uh, make shoes, okay? So you have a, a store in the neighborhood that makes shoes. and. Most people in the community buy their shoes from the local store. Uh, maybe you can have uh, restaurants that are that, that create food quickly, so you, you don't 
so you don't go to McDonald's anymore. Um, okay, I've got to go and I've got a meeting and I need a quick meal. Well, I go to the local restaurant that's owned by the workers, a cooperative, and I can get a, a decent meal kind of in a hurry. Uh, so McDonald's goes out of business in the community, etc. This is kind of the idea. Uh, you don't have, you know, you don't go to, everything is uh, um, credit union. You know, truly credit union. You establish, uh, like Bob is, uh, you know, an executive in a, in a credit union. They don't have to be humongous in size. Uh, do away with banks. Just don't, don't work with banks anymore. So that's part of how we put this awesome corporate business out of business when people just refuse to buy. Uh, how do we make our own clothes? Maybe you have a shop that does make clothes and many people are buying their own clothes and many people are going back to knitting and uh, you know the whole image of Gandhi, uh, key in the, the whole image of the spinning wheel was both building the new and it was nonviolent resistance because the cotton and then the the uh, threads that uh, the people produced, sold it to the British, Birmingham, England, uh, they made Western clothes and then they sold Western clothes to the Indians. Uh, you know, say, no. Okay, we're gonna, oh my God, I, I was just getting started. <laughs> Parallel institutions, health clinics, locally owned clinics, and you have doctors who are unemployed now, and nurses unemployed, and they're running a local clinic what, that is community owned, more and more. So, not big hospitals owned by outsiders. How do we get away from having to depend on outside businesses that have to make big profits? Food, clothing, shelter. We can creatively think of those kinds of things on the local community and start doing that. As I say, necessity, necessity is going to drive a lot of that more and more. Uh, um, solar panel companies for all the houses in the community, the local ambulance services, locally owned, home building, home repairs, it's all locally owned uh, in the sense of cooperativeness, not greed. Thank you.